And I literally just posted a video of me turning around and pulling up my thong. (laughs) And I went like this at the end, like, fuck you, yeah. Because at the end of the day, like, I get to do, I get to choose what I'm sexualizing myself about at the end of the day. What's going on? This is Tori Kravitz. Welcome to She's With The Band. We are not in Zoom. We are in the real world. So welcome to a very special edition of She's With The Band, joined by the one and only Kaylee Wolf of Rivals. How are you doing? I'm great. I'm doing wonderful, actually. Yeah, Yeah. good. Well, I was was like kind of trying to rack my brain a little because we've been internet friends for so long that I feel like I've just known you for so long. Literally same. When you walked up, (laughs) I was like, I was like, good. I wanted to be like good to meet you, but I was like, I feel like we've like met, like, it, you know, right. because we've been f- internet friends for so long. Like, <laughs> I, I was know. like, it just feels like I know you already. Yeah. You know? It was a strange thing because I was even trying to rack my brain this morning. I'm like, you know, am I that bitch that's like forgetting that we've met at some point or cross paths? But I'm like, no, I really don't think we have. I don't think we have. Um, I have terrible memory. So even if we did, I probably wouldn't. Fuck it. I have, well, can I cuss? Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. Fuck. Um, <laughs> I just realized I didn't ask that question. Um, but yeah, like I, even if I did, I, I probably wouldn't even remember because I'm right. so bad. I know. I'm really bad with that too, especially, so I mean, you tour, so you understand. When I was on Warp Tour, it'd be constant people just saying hi super quickly. And then two years later, they're like, do you remember me? We met at this one Warp Tour date. I'm like, dude, I don't even know where I was. Yeah. I don't even know what I wore. So does that happen to you pretty often when <laughs> oh, you're on the yeah. road? Oh, yeah. <laughs> especially when we do like VIPs and stuff. People are like, oh, I met you at this show. And I'm like, I don't. I don't like know. anything longer than like three months ago, even that. So you're honest about it, though. Oh, you're I'm. Not- <laughs> I am so honest with fans all the time. I'm just yeah. like, I'm sorry, I don't. Because I would rather be honest than them be than like pretend, and then they start talking about something specific, and I'm like, mm-hmm. yeah, you know. So I just don't. I just <laughs> sorry, no, I don't remember you, but can you like spark my memory or something right. usually is how that goes. So. I appreciate that you're honest about it though because I've I've kind of been on both sides. Like I'll read the situation where I'm like, is this really going to hurt somebody's feelings if I say I don't remember them or can I just be honest right now? So I've ended up on both sides of the coin and I do yeah. think honesty is the best policy. 100%. 100%. You can get yourself out a lot of a trouble by just admitting that you don't know what the heck is going on. Yeah. But I mean, speaking of being on tour and the chaos of all that, you are on tour at the moment. I, I mean, am. as we're recording this, you're out with Oxymorons, which yep. is cool. Yeah. Um, and you are obviously no stranger to touring and that hustle. So no. how's everything been? I know you showed up with your straightener in hand. I you did. Were like, I did. We're in a van, help. I know. <laughs> uh, we recently upgraded to like a like a sprinter and like we have like bunks and stuff built out, but oh, like we awesome. haven't gotten the power thing down. So I can charge like a laptop, but I can't like do my hair. So every time I get to the venue, I'm like, like, my makeup's done, I'm dressed, but then my hair's like, like In, good morning. To be fair, I thought it looked cute this morning. With Thank the little you. Blood, Thank so you my little... give yourself some credit. Thank you. <laughs> um, but I do want to dive into some stuff here with you because obviously this being She's of the Band, I don't necessarily like to harp on, oh, but like, what does female fronted mean? Let's talk about Haley Williams because that's just so cliche <laughs> yes, at this yeah. point in the podcast. But you've been really outspoken about being a woman in a rock band. I am, and yeah. the uh inequalities that come with that, the challenges that come with that. Uh, Yep. Oh, here we go. (laughs) Um, But there was a quote in an interview that you had said that really kind of struck a nerve with me as well, where it was like, if I was a man, where would, where would my band be now? Yeah. And that's an interesting question. What, what do you think is the answer to that? I mean, not to like toot my own horn, but like, I'm pretty freaking good as a vocalist. And like, people tell me all the time. So, you know, I'm going to toot my own horn for a second. Mm -hmm. But um, I just like, I question it a lot. Like if I was, if I had a penis, would my band be significantly bigger? Cause like, I do wonder that. And like, there is a level of like being a man that comes with a fan base. That's very heavily based on like girls being like, "Ah!" but like as a woman, like we don't get that as much. I mean, I'll do that for you if you would like. Well, that's why most of our (laughs) fan base tends, it's like 60% women because Mm -hmm. it's like, that's who's cheering us on. Men, men are like, nah. You know, so, but it was like where the other way it's flipped. It's like men themed or like men bands, whatever you want to call them, boy bands, um, Mm -hmm. boy fronted bands. Um, If you put like their demographic typically is 50, 50, a lot Mm. of the time. Like, so it's like, I don't know. I question it a lot. It's an interesting though, because something that comes into my mind, as you're saying, most of your fan base is female and Mm -hmm. they are like, ah, but in the girl way, like 
how would you feel though if it was a male fan base and they were like that about you because there's always that question of like being sexualized as a female front woman and what comes with that as well and it's like what how do we I mean, navigate something like that we have to take a step back on that one too because women definitely sexualize men in the industry like that, crazy that is super true um like i think sometimes women just don't realize that they're being kind of creepy and like are very creepy to some men in the industry we're seeing it a lot with bad omens right yes. now, actually and that is something to yes dig poor into. noah <laughs> bless him no i i feel you yeah and i i'm sorry so i mean i mean i i feel like probably i definitely get sexualized like it's that's definitely a thing like but i also consciously sexualize myself because i know it gets it gets people going people love that shit they yeah. eat it up so it's like it's also playing the market too. It's like this. I'm a businesswoman, man. I'm gonna do what I gotta do to make some. And it you know? is different when it's on your own accord, exactly. and you're the one sexualizing yourself versus someone else. Yeah. Exactly. It's very different when I have the power because at the end of the day, like yes, last night somebody commented on a video of me live, and I'm wearing like a thong, um, like a it's like a one piece, and like I turn around and I'm in the crowd and I'm singing, and he's like, I bet you she has a lot of wedgies, and I I I. TikToked that or replied whatever fuck I replied to that on TikTok and I literally just posted a video of me turning around and pulling up my thong it's like, <laughs> and I went like this at the end like fuck you yeah because at the end of the day like I get to do I get to choose what I'm sexualizing myself about at the right. end of the day but I can't control what other people do either right people are going to sexualize me they're going to sexualize me and there's nothing I can do about that and at the end of the day who cares yeah and I guess it's yeah. just about finding some kind of peace and controlling yeah. the situation as yeah. much as you can for someone yeah. who's in the public eye just don't touch me that got like, deep. Yeah. I was expecting to get that deep yeah. this early on. Yeah. But that's Boom. actually such good insight. Yeah, yeah. I'm so glad you're here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just like, obviously there's like a limit. Like, don't touch me. Don't freaking kiss me because that's happened. Yeah. Um, oh my God. Yeah. Not my favorite. Um, just, you know, like be respectful. Like, I mean, as you would to any other random stranger you would see on the street, like you, you are no different. That. You would But think people that, think yeah. they know you yeah, because but, yeah. of um, the internet. Yeah. <laughs> like us. You are the <laughs> internet. <laughs> Yeah, true. It so. is true. But I mean, this does kind of segue into my question slash perhaps you already answered it, but I don't know if there's anything else you want to touch on as far as specific hurdles industry wise or just at, in the climb to success that you've noticed that you feel may be attributed to being a woman. I mean, I will say outside we had this conversation. We were right before we got brought up here. I was like, there's bands that we have toured with who have gotten these crazy opportunities these male fan and bands and they've like got to play these huge venues to these huge crowds and they've gotten such great opportunities and we've never got that we never really lucked out until set it off that was the first tour we've ever done over a 700 cap tour mm -hmm. ever but i have bands that don't draw anything that are male fronted they literally draw nothing yeah. and are somehow getting these massive 2000 cap tours mm -hmm. and i'm like how is this happening and i'm like well I have literally heard from people's mouths, I don't want to bring women on tour because of girlfriends or whatever the case is, you know? Right. And I'm just like, well, that's sick. I'll just go fuck myself, you know? And there's like, I can't control being a woman, right. you know? And that's such an interesting point about yeah. saying it's because of girlfriends and things like that yeah. because that just leads into that other stigma of that us women in the music industry are just here for yeah. messing around, yeah. which like, not interested. Yeah. I'm here to work. But the, in, in and of itself, that's coming from other women. Too, when you really break it down and it's like, well, how do we break down this barrier between men and women of like what is or is not like, OK? Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like. And I guess that's why this podcast exists, though, because yeah. really more than anything, the conversation is let's show the hard work that we're doing. Mm -hmm. I don't want to harp on so much of like, oh, we're women. But it's just like, look, this is a badass woman who's just here to work yeah. and loves what she does. And I love my job. <laughs> You're an amazing <laughs> Thank singer, you. Thank first you. and foremost. And that to me is what matters the most. And Thank I think you. like the more we can highlight that yeah. that is the reality mm -hmm. of what we are here to do in the music industry, the better. Yeah, 100 yeah, percent. And like just giving people opportunities based on how like what they're doing mm -hmm. not based on internet numbers or whatever like you want to talk well, show me what you draw <laughs> yeah honestly then we'll have a conversation yeah so. and um and in addition to that you have a lot of women on your team i know yes. your manager is a woman for a long time your publicist was a woman mm -hmm. um i even was a part of the man the yep. pr company that you were working with yep. so it all is very full circle and mm -hmm. so i think it's safe to say that women also bring something really unique to the rock sphere I will say I had men – like, my whole team was men for a really long time. Um, and I just noticed that they just don't work as hard. Ooh. 
like low key, <laughs> high key actually. High key. They just don't. They don't have something to prove. True. Women have a lot to prove, especially in the rock sphere. We have to be good at what we do. We have to be better than the men. And they <laughs> or they won't take us seriously. And then it's like, you know, you tiptoe on the whole, um, is she assertive or is she a bitch? So you have to tiptoe. You have to be very, very slick. And in case anyone you... was wondering, I'm assertive. Yeah. <laughs> and that's fine. All, we're all assertive. <laughs> See, uh, I think my agent posted this the other day and she posted, is she um, is she a bitch or fuck? What was it? It's like, is she a bitch or is she just assertive or is she just a woman or something like that? Mm. And I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, oh my God. But Felicity, run, my manager runs into that a lot. People are mm -hmm. like, oh, I don't know. She's kind of a bitch. And I'm like, no, she just gets shit done. And you get frustrated because she's she's overworking you and she's making you look bad. And you don't yeah. like that. It's People are threatened by oh, yeah. our power. Oh, yeah. For sure. Oh, yeah. And like I think we're definitely in a time in the rock industry where, I mean, Hopeless Records is run 90% by women. And most people don't know that. No, they don't. A lot of a lot of record labels are run by women now. And PR agencies, too. Yep. Big time. Yep. We're seeing more and more managers that are women. Uh, we have Avange, who does, like, Meet Me at the Altar and Nothing Nowhere. We have Felicity, obviously. Um, and they're just more and more. And now Jay is starting to become yeah. a manager. It's just – and I love it. I need We need more of it. Yeah. So, honestly, if anyone's trying to get in on this, hit yeah. me up. Yeah. Let's talk. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I, it was kind of cool when – I mean, dude, you've been probably – you were the first person I ever contacted about this podcast. Yes, I know. Like, I you know. Like, was it two years ago? No. This, yeah. this podcast was a long time in the making, folks. Yeah. And I wanted you so a part of this for yeah. so long. Yeah. And it took ages to get you on But we're here. here. I know. Like, it, it took forever. But anyways, what was interesting the whole way – was the way that you teeter between genres because it is no stranger yeah. that Nawfest is very heavy metal focused. Yes. We're here for the moshers. <laughs> yeah. And Rivals is somewhere between that alt pop and hard rock. Yes. Um, and yeah, like you've had Elijah from Kane Hill on a track. Yeah. I loved the line in your bio. I just have to read it because I'm a nerd for good writing. It said, Rivals clamors for the attention of bedroom moshers and radio listeners alike. Um, I didn't write that. <laughs> but we'll give I think credit. Steph wrote that. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> I don't remember. Just who the wrote word. It. The word clamors is nice. Somebody killed it. <laughs> it wasn't me, but they killed it. Yeah, but I would love to hear just what's on your playlist. Like, what yeah. do you listen to? Because it must be all over the it's place. All over. Uh, I've been listening to a lot of New Doja. Oh my god. Bad. So that's where this energy you have right now. Yeah. The internet's coming. Oh from, yeah, isn't like it? fatty. Yeah, uh, yeah. Ash Nico. Um, nothing more. Wow. I love that band. Nothing but thieves. Um, just saw them in Washington, D.C. It killed it. Mm. Um, um, Amelia, Amelia Moore. She's like a pop artist. It's all over the place. Like, yeah. I'm like, like, you just went from like yeah. hip hop pop to nothing more being a hard I know, rock. I know. Um, I but, love that. But do you, are those the kind of bands that come into the influence when you're writing for Rivals? Oh, a hundred percent. A hundred percent. We have, I, I discovered nothing more on Ship Rocked when we played the same year and I had never heard of them and we watched them. Whew. What a um, show. <laughs> and I was like, I watched like half of it and we walked in late because I just didn't know who they were. And I was like, I was like, what is this? And I was like, holy moly, what the heck? And of course, Johnny is running around and being chaotic like he is on stage. Um, and I was like, I love that. Yeah. And like that was like Bleeding Star was like essentially modeled around um, a Nothing More song. So it was no like. No way. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. And then uh, Dark Matter was written around Nothing But These. Um, I could see that. Yeah. I mean, them being so theatrical. Yeah. And I have a new, some new songs that are have some Doja Cat moments because why not? Mm -hmm. So, you know, we're kind of just dancing. I, yeah. I, I, I just don't – one genre is boring. And I think that's the cool thing, too, that you're – specifically attributing the influences that you listen to and how they're bleeding into your music because mm. I mean we're seeing it happen with like Olivia Rodrigo right now yeah. right where she's super inspired by Paramore though she's but there's like she's getting in trouble for it yeah. but like all music is not recycled per se but we're all inspired by each other right oh yeah so, I mean I say that as if like I'm a musician maybe one day no but you're here but you're part I'm of here. it though I, you know I, well I talk about it all the time yeah. for my whole yeah. life it's like literally you're like <laughs> you're so in, you're invested in it as much as we are you know Thank you for that. So, but yeah, I mean, you are. But I, yeah, I mean, what are yeah. your thoughts on that of like 
being inspired by other artists, finding that coming into your music. Yeah. And then like kind of what's happening with Olivia Rodrigo and other artists. I mean, we all got to admit there's only so many combinations of music. Like yeah. at some point we're going to we're going to run out. It's, you know, there's, there's only, only so many notes on the so, keyboard. Only so many. So it's like at some point and like there's only so many vocal combinations inside of a of a um <laughs> I don't know. I'm thinking of like I just a staff. completely broke on how to write music. <laughs> um, progression. Progression. There's only so many many places you can go. So mm-hmm. it's like at some point, like stuff's gonna start to sound similar, and there's not much you can really do right. about it. And the thing is, everyone's brain is gonna think of maybe some other song when they oh, listen yeah. to it. Like, I mean, I remember once one band who's like very much in heavy rock was yeah. getting compared to Imagine Dragons, which made no sense, but that's what someone heard. Honestly, go off. <laughs> I'm I'm a sucker for Imagine Dragons. I know everybody, they're the new Nickelback. Everyone hates them, but like I genuinely, I never hated Nickelback either. I, I love, love Nickelback. Dragons. Yeah, enough oh, slander. I know. Stop with the Nickelback slander. It's rude. It's rude. And Imagine Dragons, they're good. The the melodies are fantastic. Thank you. God, justice. Everybody for... just wants a band to hate on. It's like, come on, guys. Well, as long as it's not rivals, I guess we're. I don't. I mean, fucking good. hate on us. I don't care. Whatever. <laughs> it doesn't change shit for me. If anything, you're just talking about us. But this um this does segue pretty nicely into the fact that you're working on new music right now. I am, You've divulged yeah. a little bit now, but I, yeah. I loved the Instagram post you put up where you were like, I'm trying to write rock songs, but I keep writing alt pop songs. <sighs> I keep writing these like indie rock pop songs and everyone, I'm just like, I'm trying so hard. Um, we recently went in with John Lundeen from Point North. We wrote this banger, banger rock song that I'm so excited to come out. Uh, I literally just saw him yesterday, so I'm just, this is so fresh on my mind, but um. Yeah, and then we have, like, a flip side of, like, these, like, weird indie rock, like, hip pop. I don't even know what the hell they are. But it's fun. Yeah. <laughs> it's fun. So. And why why stick to one genre, right? Yeah, and I mean. Especially these days. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and the thing, too, is, like, I could write something and we could take it to a producer and they could, like, obviously rock it up a little bit more. So it's, like, I'm just writing, you know? How, would, how do you want to lean then? Have you thought about that? Like, is there a way you kind of want to go or do you feel like you have to? I don't – I feel like – I mean – I have no label. I have no one telling me anything that I have to do. So that's fantastic. I don't know. I, I definitely still want to be rock. Like, I like playing rock. I really enjoy playing rock. Um, we just have always teetered. Like, you know, we have songs like Fake Rich with Elijah Witt. And then I have Strawberries, yeah. which is in a major key. And everyone's like, what the? And they're right after each other on the record, too. So it's, like, annoying. People are like, what is this? Yeah. Why it, is this? And the thing is, like, that puts you in such a cool place to do all different kinds of can tours. Do whatever I want. Yeah. yeah you, all different kinds of tours. Yeah. All I different mean, kinds of collaborations. I'm on an Oxymoron's tour right now. I did a Set It Off tour earlier, and I'm doing a Scene Queen tour in November. Oh, scene fuck. Queen. Wait, this is coming out later, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. It's fine. Be, I can't announce yeah. that yet. <laughs> so we're kind of just, like, jumping around and kind of just enjoying it, you know? Like, I, 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 I just think it's cool that we could tour with nothing more, but we could also tour with Set It Off. Fully. Like, I love that. And I think that's a cool place to be in as a woman as well because there's almost like a stigma that you would lean more poppy and more yeah. major key. But you're like, no, 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 no. no, no. Hold on. Hold on a second. I'm too sad for major keys. <laughs> Heard. Heard and understood and felt. Depresso, man. It's got me in a chokehold. <laughs> I feel. Yeah. But one thing that also has me in a chokehold is your fashion sense. Thank you. I know. I You've turned been... it down today, too. <laughs> I know. I was, like, waiting for you to roll up in some fishnets and a sequin dress and something crazy. That outfit, like, just lives in my brain uh, rent-free, you know? Dress. Like, the one with, like, the slits on the side. Oh, yeah. And you did, like, the full body stocking. I know. So, low-key, I totally stole that outfit idea from a Bratz doll. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, like, was going through Pinterest, and I was like, what the heck is that? And I was like... <laughs> I'm doing it. So I, it took me so long, shockingly long, to find a full body suit fishnet. Like, hmm. it was so hard to find one. And I don't know why, but I found it. Um, but yeah, I have my, my little – it's actually made of metal. Wait, the dress? Yeah. Oh, okay. I thought so, the fishnets for no, a second no, no, and I was sorry. super concerned. The dress, the dress. <laughs> uh, and then, you know, my big platforms that I break my ankles on sometimes. But yeah, I, t- I toned it down today. I'm just wearing Adidas. Adidas. I, no one can see, but I'm wearing some New Balance. And this is not sponsored, but if you want to sponsor me, New Balance, yeah, I'm listening. Adidas. I'm here. 
I would die. <laughs> but I guess that's the thing, right? It's like you go on stage fully yeah. glam and you have your outfits for show and then it's like during the day. Just... Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. I like literally as soon as I get off stage and I'm done with merch, I'm in the van and my makeup is off and I'm in my pajamas. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I want to be comfortable. And that's, I guess, the thing that people yeah. don't see, no. you know, when no. social media is not running and the stage yeah. isn't on. It's like, yeah, we just want to be comfy sometimes. Yeah. I just want to be comfy all the time. But you have been really pushing the boundaries with your fashion have, at the moment. Yeah. I feel like, not that this wasn't happening before, but I feel like it's to dial to 11 right yeah, now. Yeah, I'm in my baddie era. I've just decided that I'm going to show my ass off and it's I'm going to look hot. I'm like, fuck it. You know what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't know. I just have hit this like level of like, I just don't care anymore. I don't care what people say. I don't care what people think. I'm going to dress how I want to want. I want and I'm going to do what I want. And you can either be there and enjoy it with me or you can fuck off yeah you know like yeah and I don't know about you but like I know when I took a break from like the music industry for a little while and interviewing and all of yeah. that there was that immediate like when I came back in with Nalfest and stuff then I was like what are people gonna say and I was really nervous really anxious and yeah. then you do it and you're like oh no one cares did you find a similar feeling with like diving into fashion and getting more and more extra with it or at any point in your career really um I don't know maybe that's just there's always thing. comments there's always people who are like why does she – like, before, like, I used to always wear, like, baggy jeans and big shirts. People were like, why does she dress like a dude? And then now I'm wearing, like, skirts and stuff, and they're like, God, she's a slut. And I'm like, fuck off. No matter what win. I wear, no matter what I do, it's never right. So I just was like, yeah, I don't care. I just, like – it clicked off. I was like, I don't give a shit. You just can't win. I just don't care. You know what was actually – a cool thing that I don't yeah. know maybe this is going to fuel your fire even more but mm. I went to go see Scowl the other night oh, love, them. love them and you know I remember years ago I would go to some hardcore fests or hardcore shows and felt similar like I had to dress in a baggy shirt baggy pants yep. and it's just like let me just and she's up there in. in a dress yes and so I went Kicking to that show ass glammed up last night <laughs> yes. and I was like this might be the first time at a hardcore show where I look like a girl <laughs> I wore that metal dress to a, a metal concert the other night like heavy like um like like, like, like Laura Shore heavy like band, Ooh. and I was literally wearing a, the fishnet with the metal, and everyone was staring at me like, "Who the fuck is that, and why is she wearing this here?" And I was like, "But you're staring, yeah, you're looking." And that's the thing. I bring this up because people like you, people mm -hmm. like Cat Moss, yeah. are making me feel like it's cool and it is totally okay to dress that way at a hardcore show now all or I any want, heavy show. All I want is for everybody, everybody, men, women, I don't give a shit. Um, they, thems, everybody, just be a baddie. Like, just enjoy it. Enjoy yourself. Enjoy being confident. Enjoy who you are. Like, that's what fucking matters. Like, and if you're not there yet, just fake it till you make it. That's okay. I actually had this conversation with a fan the other day. Let's go. She's like, how did you get so confident? And I was like, I lied to myself for years. <laughs> <laughs> I just lied. Like, so many times I'd look in the mirror and be like, oh, I don't really like the way this looks. And I'd be like, no, no, you're fine. You're going. Mm -hmm. And I would like... I would even like put outfits on and I'd be like, I don't like the way this looks. And I'd be like, you know what? Fuck it. And I would leave in that outfit regardless. Because I was like, at the end of the day, the only time you care is when you look in a mirror. And like, as long as you're obviously not wearing, I mean, if you want to wear clown makeup, go for it. But like, I'm not, I'm not one to judge. But um, I mean, ICP fans, we're not judging. Yeah, we're not. Like, go, go off if that's what you want to do. Uh, but like, as long as you feel good and like, you're like, you're comfortable in this stuff that you're wearing. Sometimes it's like, Look at yourself and be like, you look great. You just look great. Yourself. Just lie to yourself. Even if you don't yeah. necessarily believe it, eventually you will. I mean, I even used to do that when I was 14, 15 and started yeah. doing interviews. And I was mm -hmm. walking in these green rooms with a bunch of old dudes and my favorite bands. And I'm like, yeah. I just left my study hall early to be here. <laughs> I, need to, I need to act like I belong here, even yeah. though I definitely don't think I do. Yeah. And it was just like, yeah, over time, mm -hmm. the confidence grows when yeah. you just – get out of your comfort zone. Yeah. It becomes a comfort zone. I also think it comes with age. That too. You know, especially women. Well, I think men too, but like women for sure. Like it, it takes time to like enjoy yourself. Yeah. Like I'm 29. Like it took a long time to get here and I'm happy I'm here, but I would do anything if somebody helped me get here in my tw early mm. 20s. I would be unstoppable. Yeah. I would be absolutely unstoppable if I was who I am today when I was 21. We would have been scary. Oh, yeah. Forces to be reckoned oh, with. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, even I think of like, I was thinking about it weirdly this morning, mm -hmm. how I did Warped Tour when I was 19 and 20 years old. And at the time, I was like, I got this. I'm amazing. Yeah. And I look back and I was like, Tori, you didn't have it. You didn't you, have it. I mean, but you it's kind the confidence. Of it. <laughs> it's the confidence. I'm telling you, that's yeah. what wins. At the, you could be like, like, 
conventionally ugly but if you have confidence in riz that is way more attractive riz. to people than like physical attraction it's like people do not realize that like confidence in riz is 90 percent of like attraction and that is uh, yes yeah thank you for saying that because it is 100 percent true yeah I riz it up riz all the riz <laughs> but don't be weird <laughs> yeah there's a fine line there's a fine line yeah <laughs> And we were also talking about this before we came into the building for this wonderful setup yeah. of um, what a hustler you are. Yeah. Um, I think when people see you having as much raise as you do on social media yeah. and on stage, they may not realize how much of the band is still not DIY because you have a team, but a lot of things are done yourself. Yeah. Um, I do all of our merch. Um, I recently started outsourcing it just because I've been overwhelmingly busy, but I used to do all our merch. All our graphics are done by me. Um I work very closely with my manager. Like we, she, like moves are made based solely on like my, what our conversations and I'm like, I want this. Like I don't in any manner whatsoever. Like I want to make sure that things are going the way that I need them to go because it's my career. The person who cares the most is me. Right. Like no one is going to care more than me. I always say that is no one will yeah. do a better job at my own career than I will. Yeah. A hundred percent. So it's like, you have to like, I don't, it's it's hard because like as a woman I'm like you have to work hard but then I see these dudes who are like yeah my manager told me I had to be here today <laughs> and I just like showed up and I'm on like three pills right now and, and I like, just woke up 15 minutes ago yeah like I'm like <laughs> must be nice I've been up for like three hours getting ready and like have to look good and you know but and just remember that is a generalization that is but a generalization I, <laughs> I can think of a few men that come to it's mind when you yeah, say yeah. that so yeah, like I, yeah. every woman I know in the industry, like they work hard to not only like look presentable and look good because we have to. I know. We don't have a fucking choice. Because if we walked in looking like shit, people would probably be like, yeah, no. I mean, honestly, do y'all think I wanted to put this lipstick on today? Hell no. I didn't, didn't want to put this in. My, I don't want to put this on my face this early. Normally I do this at like five, bro. But I wanted well, to be here. Well, that's my fault. No, so I I'm wanted sorry, to be here. But I was, when you asked me, I was like, yes, absolutely. I mean, this we, was just... Too long in the making. We drove overnight for this, okay? We went straight through when we were we normally wouldn't. So. I'm honored. I know. I, I hope y'all like and you. comment on this episode now, just for that, if anything. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, with this hustle and the fact that you're so involved with your manager as mm -hmm. well, I mean, it's tough to pinpoint what a day-to-day -day looks like because music industry, there's never the same day twice. <laughs> But maybe more so if you could give me some of the like the general things that you really do to help keep the business running that sure. are um, your lanes. Yeah, I wake up, I panic. Um, <laughs> call my manager, we talk. She calms me down. She says, you're doing great, you're fine. And I say, cool. And then about two hours I get ready usually. Um, and then I panic and I go, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, this doesn't sound good. I'm like, bah! <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, no, it's just, a, I'm on the phone a lot. Like I'm mm. on my phone a lot. Like. I'm really connected with our fan base too, so I'm I'm on my phone a lot, texting fans back and or like messaging fans. Back I was like, you're texting the fans. No, God, Whoa, no, that's deep. I never give my number out. <laughs> I'm like really weird about my phone number. Me um, too. People always ask. I'm like, no. People really ask they your phone do number. Do all the time. It's you. People are bold. I like go off. Fair go play. Off. I mean it. <laughs> I've been asked some crazy stuff. So, but yeah, and you mentioned yeah. as well that you um you also do your merch. Well. You were and yeah. you're in graphic design. I am, yeah. So that's like you do my, a lot of different things in the business. I do, yeah. Um, I do most of our accounting. I do like I do all, really, like, yeah. I do like a lot of it. So, so you're like super, super smart and mega, mega talented. Yeah, I, uh, I am actually smart. I know. I people. I say that yeah. sarcastically. As I know. If I'm shocked, I'm, but that's really impressive. That yeah, you even I'm, do accounting. I'm stuff. actually in school right now. That's right. Most people don't know that. Well, I guess I'm I'm not like quiet about it, but um, I'm literally getting a degree for computer science and physics right now. People are like, why are you doing that? And I'm like, because I want to. Is that, would that be something separate from the band or is there a way that all of that That's turns definitely into not rivals things? Connect. No, probably not. I mean, maybe the computer science a little bit, but um, I just have always, something I've always loved is I love space. I've always loved it. Um, I love robots and I would love to build robotic systems for NASA. Wow. Um, in a future life, in a different distant universe, um, maybe one day in the future. But for now, um, yeah, I'm just, I'm literally in my the, in the van doing homework. Wow. Doing the thing. I yeah. mean, just in case touring wasn't exhausting enough, just having to focus you know, on the touring. Why do you do this to yourself? I know. It's like <laughs> I run like three businesses and then I'm also in school. It's like, what am I doing? People, but are, I mean, yeah. people are like, why is she so tired all the time? I'm like, 
I mean, it's kind of, that's kind of the hustle of the music industry, is, though, yeah. because, I mean, I'm in PR, and I do the Not Fest thing, mm-hmm. and then, like, sometimes DJ New Metal Nights, like, why? Why do we do all these things? I don't know. I don't know. Well, one, I like it. It's true. Yeah. A lot of it comes down to, like, I just enjoy doing it. Mm-hmm. Like, if I didn't like it, I just straight up wouldn't do it. Fair play. Yeah. I have, I have like, I, I have an on and off switch. I either go or I don't. Mm-hmm. It's very, there's no in between for me. Well, you are going. I am going. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I'm at 100 right now. I so. I um I don't know why I just anytime someone says a hundred or says like up to ten I'm always thinking of that spinal tap up to eleven I've already mentioned it once in this interview and now it's second yeah, time just up to eleven <laughs> um, but what else is next for Rivals Is there anything else you want to mention that's been uh, popping Yeah so we've been writing a record um, slowly writing records is hard everyone's like where's the record I'm like it takes a long time and I'm in a moment where I just want it to be perfect like this is our third record needs to be right like I want it to be right like this is this record matters like a lot how do you know when it's right though because as an artist it's one of those things I've seen it time and time again where you just don't know when it's done honestly low-key I did not think dark matter would be a big song wow I didn't I like when we were writing it I was like I liked it it's a belter but I liked they won't love you more a lot more Hmm. um and they won't love you is the lowest streaming song on that EP and dark matter is the highest I love a deep cut though yeah, deep cut for sure. It was it's my favorite. So, but yeah, I I didn't I didn't I didn't. You don't know. I mean, some yeah. people know. Some people like say that they're like, oh, we knew it was gonna be a hit. And I was like, I fucking don't know. Yeah, I just don't know. And I guess it's tough too because the songs are so close to you that some may mean more to you or have yeah. such a story I'm or violently biased. Right, you <laughs> like you have a bias towards certain songs that are different than what like somebody totally outside would perceive. Yeah, so like what I love is not necessarily always what other people love. I'm not saying I don't like Dark Matter. I love that song, but like, <laughs> you know, I like Dangerous more. Also, yeah, a belter. I love that one because every time we play that one live, it's always just like it's like a bunch of women, and then there's like twenty dudes, and they're like, "I'm a woman with no regrets," <laughs> and they're like, "Love that song." I'm like. Go off. Go off, King. I mean, we're inclusive. Yeah, we love it. We love the energy. <laughs> well, all right. New record. We'll be on the lookout. Yeah. yeah and um, to wrap up our episode, we always end every shoes with the band with four jaw-dropping questions. Let's Are you ready to be in the hot seat? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry to everyone with earphones. It just hurt. Sorry. Ah! Um, oh, that's great. Um, so first one is, what is the most jaw-dropping experience you've ever had at a show? Could be one of yours or someone else's. Uh, yeah. Uh, we just played Rockville. And um, the there was like a huge storm and it delayed our set like by like hours, like four or five hours. And then we were supposed to play against like a huge band and they just were like, nah, we're not going to play. And they just left. So we <laughs> played against nobody. So we ended up playing to like four or five thousand people. Oh, my God. And then afterwards, we were supposed to have an interview with um, – oh. I don't remember. <laughs> Fuck. It was Let's one of the big Rolling ones. Stone because that sounds really good. They were there and they had a tent and they kept the tent open for us. And we – we rushed off a stage. They like pushed us off stage and like, you got to go. And they threw us into a freaking um, uh, cart. Yeah. And we were ripping it through the crowd. Okay. <laughs> it's like, me, me, me. My hair, we're in Florida, mind you. My hair is so like this from performing. <laughs> and they were like, we got to do it. And I got thrown in there. I, I was like, pictures. I was like, all the pictures of like this. <laughs> uh, we were like signing things. Uh, we had the, like that night, we literally, we, uh, we were up against like some really big bands and we sold the most that night compared to all those bands that night in signature for posters. And they were like, they were like, they were shocked. They were like, what? And I was like, <laughs> that is so cool. I mean, Rockville's massive. Yeah. We were, we were up against some huge bands that day and we somehow outsold all of them. And you sold all of the Florida dad rockers on your music, oh, which yeah. is quite the feat as we well. We do that. We have that habit. So we've <laughs> done that many times. That's why D W P keeps giving us festivals because we, every time we're there, we like they like we kill it and they love it. So they keep inviting us back, and I can't argue. So. I mean, congratulations! Thank that you. Is yeah, it's hard. very jaw dropping. It's very hard to do that to get any festival circuit to give a shit. So right, I will take that as a win. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Now yeah. I wish I was at Rockville. I think I missed something. You did. It was a great show. Man. Yeah. Next time. Next time. Because there will be a next time. There will the, be a next at time. At the rate of this. Oh, yes. Uh, the next one here is the- <gasps> Wait, ooh. before I go. Sorry. Oh, yes. We also accidentally backed our trailer into the Daytona, Daytona um, Speedway. Ooh. <laughs> sorry. I just had to put that in there. 
I mean, I, I kind of forgot that Rockville's at the Speedway now, it's literally which the, is yeah. really funny when you're walking in the, the yeah, grounds. We, and Yeah, we accidentally backed the trailer into it. It's like And you're this. definitely not supposed to touch it during Rockville. Oh, no, like, they're that is very super, strict. Super off limits. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, like, I don't, most people, don't, but it's literally like the turns are like this. Yeah. So we just went, dunk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the first time I saw the speedway, I was like, oh, that's a lot more vertical than I thought. Yeah, it would be. it's shockingly vertical. It's scary. <laughs> so um, but yeah. Amazing. And the next one is the most jaw-dropping misstep early in your career and the lesson that you learned from it. Be careful who you work with. Hmm. This sounds like definitely from experience. <laughs> yeah. But I think that's every musician. Most managers talk out their asses. It's true. Um, and everyone thinks they could be a manager until they're a manager yeah like we were talking outside like management is easy on paper but 90 percent of management is who you know and if you don't know anybody i don't care how good you are at your job you suck at your job and especially if it's someone new to the industry they probably don't know anyone (laughs) yeah so just be careful who you work with um and then obviously um don't sign to a label you make a lot more money when you don't yeah so and drop the mic, but not really because these are on tables. Yeah. Um, <laughs> next one, most jaw-dropping female artists that you would love to work with. Oh, God, there's so many. If you want to give me a top five, I'll take it. Doja Cat. Okay. I would die to have her on a song. I love her. I've always loved her. Uh, I'm just going to name the ones I already named. Ash Nico. Um, Amari. Oh, God. Uh, we'll go three. Okay. Oh, Amelia Moore. Sorry. <laughs> and just for so. kicks, can we get somebody in metal too? I yes. just want to know both sides of the coin Ooh. here. You know what I would love to see is uh, Elisa from Arch Enemy because you have the same hair. Yeah. yeah Only for the, like, for the hair. But Honestly, she's also amazing. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be cliche and say Haley Williams. Yeah. I would die. She, you know, at the end of the day, we all get compared to her, but like She's an idol, man. She's she kicked yeah. ass. She she navigated the industry perfectly. She she did great. So she paved the way for so many women yeah. as well. And yeah. also, yeah, I mean, she yeah. handled. She's not problematic. No, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah. And with all the tabloids and everything, that's yeah. not an easy yeah. easy thing. Well, the last one um, in the internet should make this a fun one for you. Most jaw dropping misconception about you that you wish people understood could be about you or about the band. I'm not mean. I get that so much. People always, I thought you would be a lot more mean. I'm like, I'm not mean. I'm actually really nice. It's until you give me a reason to be mean is when mm. I kind of go. Yeah. So, but no, I'm actually really nice. I care about people a lot. Like, I, a lot. Mm-hmm. So I'm not mean. I swear. Just come say hi. <laughs> it's crazy though because if I had a dollar for every time that is someone's answer to yeah. that question on this podcast, which I feel like just ties full circle to what you're saying about like the assertive thing and like. That, how that's perceived yeah. in the industry for us as ladies. Yeah. People see confidence as cocky and confidence as, as bitchy sometimes. It's like, no, I just enjoy myself. But I also enjoy you people too. Yeah. You know, I like people. That's why I do my <laughs> yeah. job. That's and, why I like my job. And I can attest to it. She's very nice. Thank you. Now that we've officially met in the I flesh. Know. <laughs> I know. I have my moments, but for the most part, I'm, I'm very nice. Yes, yeah. yes. And well, thank you so much, Kaylee. This thank has you. been a really good talk. Thank you for having me. It's been me. great. And you know what to do. Stay tuned for Rivals. New album on the way. Dark Matters of Anger. All the songs are banger. Listen to the deep cuts. You know what to do. Listen um, to They Won't Love You. I love that song. <laughs> I wrote it about a threesome. Let's go. <laughs> and uh, also, if you want to stay tuned to She's of the Band here on NotFest, it's every other week. Subscribe, all the things. You can follow us at SWTB Pod on Instagram and Twitter as well. And uh, thanks for hanging. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.